Hello my garden friends and my YouTube friends and my worm friends and my friends in general and everyone else out there on a beautiful Sunday morning. Um, I'm on my back porch and I'm playing with my worms so you know it's a happy day. But anyway it's uh, mid 70s. It's supposed to go up to mid 80s today. I'm in uh, central Florida in a little town called Windermere and we're very close to Disney World and uh, that gives you our general location but it's a, kind of a nice little development and uh, mainly uh, single-family homes we do have some town homes down in one section but mainly we all have our own yard and they're not real big but you know nice size anyway I'm out here with my worms and you guys know that I have, if you've been watching me, you know that I have these two planters. And they're waist-high planters, which makes them really nice for planting. But behind, excuse me, behind this screen, as you can see, it's just almost noon. And you can see my backyard is in sunlight, but I've got shade there and I won't get sunlight here for another, uh, about another hour, and then um, by the time it gets to be about 4, 4.30, uh, the sun will have passed over here and, and be setting 4, 5, 6 down there. So I really don't get that many hours of sunlight. So I've turned this into a mobile, um, or topless, whatever you want to call it, uh, worm bin and I'm not really treating it like a worm bin where I'm just feeding it uh, my kitchen scraps, but I'm really just keeping it as a really fertile uh, place for, um, for the worms to be. So I started to turn this over and I thought, gee, you know, I really should show you guys. Um, I started out, I've taken cocoons out of here. I've taken uh, hundreds of worms look at those and that's just I've already turned it over once so I thought they would have gone into a dive but um, red wigglers as far as I'm concerned uh, you can see cocoons in there uh, I feed it uh, put in plenty of um, coffee grounds and I put in um, uh, eggshells uh, you can see I've got some uh, chopped up paper the one thing that I did just do, which I just hit myself, was this last time I put in some cardboard. That's not it. Where did I leave that? It was corrugated cardboard, and I thought, oh, I wonder if they would, I wonder if they would work on it. But um, now it's gotten kind of clumpy in there, and I think it's probably because I put in so many. Uh, coffee grounds that let me get to a section that I haven't pulled up because you can see I've got worms just everywhere. Let me just let me get a little bit of an unveiling there. Let's see if I can turn that so that you see the big pull back. I would I would guess if I were just I would guess that I probably have 500 to a thousand worms in there. You can see that's pretty much a It kind of looks like a worm ball doesn't it? I mean, I don't get worm balls like They're attached to food or anything, but I just have so many in here and uh, I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with them if you were going to ask that question uh, other than to just keep feeding them and occasionally I pull out some soil. Boy, there's lots, aren't there? And let's just see if we can find a couple to show you how nice they are. I mean, they're not huge. They look like adolescents. Come here, guys. Don't be shy now. Oh, whoops. That was one that had a an egg attached, looked like an egg attached to it. There's a there's the yellow.
I took out the 100 cocoons from here. I took out the 100 uh, adolescents from here. And, you know, I if you're watching me, you know that I just uh, made a new bin for them. A bigger bin. And put those graduates. <gasps> what a good name for a movie. Um, oh, here it is. You see, this This was cardboard. This was corrugated cardboard. See if I can find... I started to pull it apart before, and there were actually worms. Well, there's a cocoon. But there were actually worms, like, inside it, inside the corrugation. Maybe not anymore. You can still feel it still feels clumpy. It still feels wet. Um, so it'll it'll take probably a while for it to break down. And it was a much bigger piece. I probably put in maybe a, a six by eight inch piece in here. This is the bin that I've put in uh, cornmeal, and it got clumpy and I tried making it a wider sweep of cornmeal and that really seems to have helped. I don't have that clump in there. I mean, uh, if you watched, it was a few weeks ago and I, a couple weeks ago maybe, and I just made, you know, like a, a divot the whole way along and I uh, originally tried doing just like a feeding station and it, it almost looked like rubber. Um, it, I think it just got too thick and it didn't break down properly. Uh, but because I have worms in soil, and that's how this all started out, it was just potting soil. As a matter of fact, I'll, I'll show you another bag I have I'm planting today. But um, it was miracle Grow potting soil last year. And I filled the two of them up with... Uh, probably about four inches of potting, five inches of potting soil, and then I put in uh, worm castings that I had, and uh, and just you know tried growing in it, and I was getting a lot of uh, spindly looking seedlings, and then they would just you know fall over and die because they just they weren't getting enough sun. Uh, it was just there's a red wiggler. I think they're all red wigglers, but I like to see that. When I see that tail, then I kind of go, oh, yep, that's that's the telltale. So anyway, if you if you have any kind of a planter that you decide you really would like to grow worms, but you say, well, you know, I don't, gee, I don't have the, I don't have the means to do it or whatever. I'm telling you, these guys are so. Prolific and there's whoops, I keep moving that. Sorry, and they're so active that um, within months you would have more and more worms. Let me back that off a little bit. Does that work for you? There. And this is so therapeutic. Ooh, lots of worms. If I were if I were a fisherman, I would get excited. But I'm not. I still get excited, but I'm not a fisherman. I don't want to give my worms away to fishermen. Because I guess if they were bringing me fish, I might have a second thought. But anyway, just showing you how beautiful they are. I mean, that's a really, that's a pretty worm. Wait a minute, let me bump that one up. That's a pretty worm. And he knows it. Look at me. And it, it, isn't it amazing for those of you who have them in your hand, how they always go in between your fingers to find their way out? And, the, and they just, and for those of you who aren't, who go, oh, that's just creepy, um, <laughs> they tickle. It's just such a sweet little creature who, um, almost like they're just kissing your hand. And uh, I wish everybody could experience this because I think it would, um, 
it would make the world a, a kinder place if we could be kinder to our little lesser animals. Go down there, little baby. Anyway, that was all I wanted to show you was that these worms are doing so well. And I have hundreds and hundreds. If, if I thought I had a thousand in here, I don't think I would be exaggerating. And um, I haven't pulled cocoons out for a long time. I suppose I could, I could do that and start my, my little nursery again. Loads and loads of worms. Every, every forkful, every little clawful here has 10, 12 worms in it. Look at all of those. Aren't they something? And they're all active. And if I feed them today, it will just be some more uh, cornmeal and maybe some, uh, I don't know if I want to put any more coffee. I'm, I'm really getting high. Can you see how high this is getting to be? I, nobody leaves. I'm, I don't have any escapees. Um, I do give it water because I'm out in my back porch. And uh, it, get, it does get sunlight in here, so it is getting dried out. And so I do give them that. But other, other than the water, eggshell, coffee grounds, cornmeal, uh, do I give them anything else? Uh, I think one time I gave them oats. Um, if I gave them something like strawberries or bananas, I think I would grind it up um, and put it in something like my uh, Nutribullet. And so I was feeding them more of a slurry that they would get the that and a little bit of rainwater. So... I did have more and more. I started out with a lot of, and I always say it's my Cheerio boxes because I know that's what it is. And it just seems to find its way to the top and it crumbles. And you know how when it, your soil gets really dry, um, even if it's a miracle Grow, it gets kind of crunchy at the top? Well, that's what I seem to be finding here at the top of it. But underneath, of course, it's just beautiful soil. Look at the color. This isn't enhanced. I don't have a filter on this. This is, this is, when they say it's black gold, they mean it. So there's that piece of cardboard again. I think maybe we'll, here, wormies. There you go. You guys have at it. I can get all of you off my fork. I don't want to leave it. No, no soldier left behind. Um, there we go. All right. I think everybody can find their way back home. And I'm going to leave you with that, other than to tell you that it was a great day to get some seeds in the ground. Only in my case, it's in pots to begin with. And what I did is I had some sweet alyssum left over, and so I just planted... Uh, 12 pots worth of uh, sweet alyssum and uh, then I made a hole in the center of each pot. You know, sweet alyssum is a, more of a blanket, so you want to uh, sprinkle your seeds. You don't want to just plant one, you want to uh, plant multiples. And so it has the most wonderful fragrance to it. And so I planted 12 of those and then I made a little hole with my little plastic knife and planted, oh, I think there's two or three, uh, the bok choy. This purple lady is so pretty. I mean, it looks like you've taken a, um, uh, what do I want to say, uh, either a hibiscus or a rose of Sharon. Uh, do you remember when we were kids, you turned them upside down and it was making like a dancing lady? And, and this one is called purple lady. So uh, anyway, there's a few seeds in the center of each one. And I thought it would be pretty if they came up and you had this as your centerpiece with the alyssum around it. I could make a really pretty border. But that's just my thought. And uh, so anyway, this is the 27th. 
and so let's hope they come up and I have something to plant next month and then over here on this one I didn't I didn't uh, aerate this uh, worm bin yet but I have some um, tomatoes I planted 20 uh, 36 and they're called uh, a Borghese tomato they're supposed to be like an inch to two inches and they dry very well and then in this little oblong uh, container I just sprinkled in some marigold seeds that I had from last year's French marigolds and I'm hoping they come up so I can plant them as a companion plant for the tomatoes to <clears throat> avoid that dreaded uh, tomato hornworm. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I will leave you there and say that I hope that everyone has a chance to get out and experience Mother Nature today and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Take care, everyone. See you soon. Bye-bye.